Hi, my name is Antonis and I'm the painter of this video. Today I want to show you how I paint uh, a portrait um, originally painted by Caravaggio. I will study uh, this uh, head uh, of uh, one of his famous paintings uh, that is Judith uh, Killing Holofernes. It's a very famous painting by Caravaggio and um, I will uh, try to understand better. Recently I saw a video uh, about the technique of Caravaggio and uh, it was very intriguing, very interesting to... and it uh, made me think that uh, it's something I want to try and uh, explore a little bit uh, more. So, thank you for being here. Uh, welcome to this channel. If this is your first time uh, uh, watching this video, um, I do hope you are uh, healthy, you are uh, creative and uh, follow me if you want to see how um, this portrait will uh, evolve, this uh, head of uh, Judith will evolve. It's pretty interesting and uh, pretty different than uh, the other videos of uh, this channel when I paint with uh, egg tempera. So the first thing uh, that uh, I do here is um, cover a wood board with uh, a dark uh, red color. This dark red uh, color uh, here is acrylic on uh, a rabbit skin glue gesso. This acrylic is uh, very useful, uh, not only because it covers uh, the board with uh, the, the color that apparently uh, Caravaggio used, this uh, deep red, uh, brownish red color, but also because uh, it will uh, seal the, the thirsty gesso uh, a little bit uh, and uh, the gesso will not later on absorb the, the oil that uh, I apply. Um, sometimes we apply oil on rabbit skin glue gesso and uh, uh, the gesso just uh, absorbs uh, every drop, uh, every percentage of oil in the pigments and um, the pigments uh, become more dull, more uh, less shiny, without uh, uh, they lose their brightness, uh, etc. So. Um, Sealing this uh, rabbit skin glue gesso with uh, acrylic uh, color is very, very useful. You can also use, um, it's, I believe that it's preferable to use uh, um, egg tempera to seal this uh, uh, board, this uh, gesso, or even uh, um, oil, as, uh, but you, then you'll have to wait for uh, some days to dry. Now, the, after I've sealed this and painted this uh, background uh, uh, with uh, this dark uh, red color, I, I've transferred my drawing uh, on it. And uh, after having transferred the drawing, as you saw, I, I drew with uh, my brush uh, the darker uh, parts of this uh, portrait, the facial characteristics, the, the shapes on, of the shadow on uh, that head. And uh, I try to understand uh, which areas uh, uh, receive the light and which uh, areas uh, will stay in dark. I will not be um, very thorough in this uh, at this step. As you see, I just uh, um, placed these shapes, uh, these darker elements, without giving them uh, too much uh, um, attention, let's say. <clears throat> And uh, after having done this, as you see, I'm uh, painting this uh, black background. It's uh, very characteristic in the work of uh, Caravaggio, these uh, deep black uh, backgrounds. Uh, they are very... Um, they're very uh, nice in a way. They create this uh, atmosphere of uh, uh, drama on his uh, paintings, this uh, theatrical uh, atmosphere, and uh, they're very, very... Uh, powerful. So <clears throat> I paint this uh, uh, black background and then I will see if I need to darken even more of these uh, shadowy parts uh, that I have painted on uh, my red uh, um, background. 
It's very, working with oil is something uh, always intriguing for me. It's always uh, challenging and uh, I feel that uh, I'm stronger in painting with, uh, with tempera, egg tempera or uh, any other. But uh, it's very refreshing to work with uh, oil and uh, uh, it, um, it feels very fresh for me since uh, the, um, the way of using color, of manipula manipulating the color is uh, very, very different than that of uh, tempera. Here, for example, <laughs> I can say that uh, the brush uh, works, uh, functions as uh, a, a manipulator, an instrument that will move color around. It doesn't need to be uh, perfectly sharp or uh, have a spring uh, be, uh, you know, immaculate like uh, the brushes that we use for uh, tempera. Here the brush uh, just functions to move around color and uh, um, of course we need the, like here a, a small uh, uh, strong uh, brush to create the details, some details, but uh, in general uh, I would say that uh, um, brushes can be more uh, worn, we should see them as um, uh, instruments uh, um, of moving color around than placing color and uh, building layers with it uh, like the way we do it in uh, tempera. Now here I will... Uh, <laughs> This was the intriguing part for me when uh, I studied the techniques of uh, Caravaggio. Um, so what he does and uh, what I'm doing here is uh, just uh, placing a plain titanium white uh, on um, the areas of the face that uh, will receive the light. Of course, here I have to say that uh, this ch in this channel I do not really explore the actual pigments uh, or the, the very original uh, materials that uh, these masters uh, used. Uh, I'm not interested in um, doing this. I'm not interested in making copies uh, exactly like uh, um, and using the materials, the exact materials that these masters used. I'm just interested in uh, um, understanding how they built uh, the light on uh, on their work, how they um, they proceeded with painting these uh, paintings, how they achieved this uh, freedom of in their brush strokes and their mastery, and uh, less on the technical, let's say, aspect of uh, their work. Uh, what kind of uh, canvases they used, or what kind of uh, boards they used, brushes, etc. I believe that um, I believe that uh, we should try and become better uh, painters. We should evolve uh, our uh, art, uh, and uh, these uh, materials, of course, uh, are very uh, useful to know, but uh, I think we can work uh, and paint very, very nicely, even with uh, today's uh, materials and what we have uh, today. So, um, I don't think, uh, uh, even if uh, Caravaggio did not use uh, titanium white uh, to, to proceed in this step of, uh, on his process, um, that's fine for me. I will use uh, titanium uh, white and uh, see where it uh, will uh, lead me. So I'll try to place these uh, shapes of uh, light uh, according to the painting uh, and my reference and uh, little by little to, uh, to understand where the, the light will be and where the shadows. Now, they say that uh, Caravaggio does this. This is something uh, very unusual for me to build uh, directly with the white color, creating this uh, grisel uh, um, light, this uh, black and white almost uh, um, um, volumes. And um, 
This is uh, very strange for me. This goes to them uh, to save some money on uh, uh, colored uh, pigment. White was uh, uh, more uh, cheap uh, to buy and uh, consume. And um, I also believe this was uh, uh, just to keep the brightness of, uh, of the painting. And uh, uh, later on, when they will apply the actual flesh colors, uh, the white beneath will uh, shine and inform the, the painting. So this is almost like uh, a poster. Uh, it has a quality of uh, a poster, very abrupt, uh, very um, sharp uh, shapes of uh, light. They are, they are uh, here. So anyway, I hope that uh, you are doing uh, fine and uh, you keep yourselves uh, busy, um, creative. I want to thank you so much for um, being here and uh, participating in this channel it's very uh, nice to to read your comments and uh, understand that uh, you um, you really enjoy these videos and uh, you get some inspiration many times to uh, to get into your studios and uh, paint yourselves it's really nice and thank you so much if you like, of course, uh, this video, uh, do explore the rest of my videos in the channel and uh, feel free to subscribe and participate in the comments uh, below. Now, <laughs> it's uh, very hot uh, here. It's uh, summertime uh, here in Greece when I'm doing this uh, video and... Uh, it's really, really nice. It's uh, time to go to the beach. And, uh, but there's always time. After studio, we just go for a swim. Let me know of uh, your studio situation. Are you, do you have a nice studio? Um, do you have a nice view or uh, I've seen amazing uh, artists uh, uh, living and working in uh, basements uh, that they produce amazing work with, uh, <laughs> with in a studio with a horrible view but this doesn't stop them and uh, I've always uh, admired uh, them a lot. Now I'm sure that uh, what you see might seem um, confusing to you and uh, very hard to do. Uh, this was uh, at least my uh, reaction when I, when I saw this process of painting. It's something that uh, uh, I could uh, never have imagined to, to paint uh, like this. And um, this really was uh, something very confusing. Um, but, uh, you know... Painting is uh, always uh, like that. Uh, it can be confusing and um, it can uh, feel uh, like uh, walking in blind, in uh, darkness. And uh, But that's always the beauty of it, taking a risk to, um, to do something uh, unexpected, to, to paint something uh, in a way that you've never tried uh, before. That's something um, very interesting and uh, don't let this uh, confusion uh, uh, deprive you from the joy of uh, trying something new and uh, trying to understand uh, a new method uh, and um, an artist uh, deeper. 
So here you saw me blending these uh, wide, uh, sharp shapes uh, to the rest of uh, the head, the darker areas of uh, the head. I'm using um, uh, almost uh, grayish, uh, grayish scale uh, colors. And uh, I try to to blend this, uh, to make a very basic uh, blending of this uh, sharp uh, white light uh, to the shadows. Mm, at this point I'm not preoccupied uh, about um, uh, how it looks. I know it looks <laughs> horrible. It doesn't look anything uh, uh, promising at this point. But um, I say to myself, okay, I'll just uh, keep painting and see where this will uh, lead me. And uh, of course, this is uh, another element of uh, this channel. Um, I'm here uh, discovering uh, with you uh, these masters, these great uh, uh, works. Uh, I'm not to just um, uh, show you how I do these uh, paintings. For me, it's an exploration as well. And um, it's always nice to receive comments uh, from you about um, this or that. Uh, it's really helpful and uh, nice. So I don't uh, aspire to give you the exact uh, technique of Caravaggio. Of course, uh, <laughs> I was not uh, there when he painted and uh, uh, neither of us uh, was. So I can say that uh, this was uh, exactly 100% his technique. Uh, they, they say according to resources that uh, he did paint it like that, at least in, most of, uh, in many of his uh, works. And uh, it's nice to see if uh, <laughs> uh, this can uh, actually will bring this to the test and see if uh, it um, finally gives us some uh, results. So at this point, I just try to, to do comparisons in my mind and compare the, um, the light uh, to the shadow, compare how dark the shadow, for example, underneath the head and the neck should be, um, and um, that in comparison to the light. I want to make these uh, uh, comparisons and uh, keep them the way they should be. I don't mind if uh, my color looks, uh, um, you know, my brush strokes look uh, horrible at this uh, stage. That's something that uh, I will correct uh, later on. And uh, of course I have to say that uh, at this point, until this point, uh, I just use uh, turpentine, odorless uh, turpentine, to thin down uh, these uh, oil pigments. I haven't used any uh, oil, uh, linseed oil uh, um, at all. I keep this for, uh, for later uh, layers. Here, for example, the ear is very high in value. I have to, to darken it, bring it down in uh, a little bit, because uh, it doesn't look uh, being uh, in the shadow at all. It's uh, as if I'm trying to, to paint this uh, painting uh, in uh, black and white, almost. The more I do these studies of these masters, the more <laughs> amazed I am by them. It's something that uh, to me looks um, alien almost, to their, uh, their mastery, their uh, devotion on what they did. Um, 
it's really amazing and then uh, i'm just asking myself uh, if uh, i devote uh, as much time as they did on their uh, artwork um, it seems to me that um, <laughs> you know by having a full time job by uh, you know wanting to have some uh, fun wanting to uh, to be sociable etc um uh, time for uh, painting uh, becomes less and less so i believe it's also a matter of uh, how much time these artists uh, had uh, uh, devoted in uh, what they did of course they were um, very charismatic and their talent was um, you know divine but uh, i believe that uh, given uh, the if we if we gave it uh, um, much uh, time we would see much uh, improvement i don't believe these people were uh, uh, aliens i believe they were humans um, but they gave uh, space uh, to their uh, talent and uh, this talent uh, flourished So as you see, I'm doing some uh, blending here, and uh, I, I try to keep the the shapes uh, as I see them on my reference. darkening the the shadows a little bit uh, try to remember that uh, the shadows are very very important in uh, painting uh, no matter what you paint if, if it is uh, um, contemporary painting uh, even if it is uh, an icon uh, something else uh, shadows are uh, the darker areas of uh, a painting are extremely important just because they will uh, reveal the beauty of uh, um, of the light uh, areas um, if everything was light then uh, we wouldn't be able to to see anything in painting so um, try to i tend to at least to uh, paint everything lighter than they are and i have to keep reminding myself that uh, uh, not to be afraid of uh, the shadows <laughs> you know um, literally and uh, in painting not to be afraid uh, um, to go dark and uh, Caravaggio is of course a great uh, um, example here um, he used the darkness to uh, to create this beauty on uh, his paintings Sometimes uh, we think we have uh, shadowed enough uh, a face, a head or something like that, but uh, the shadows are still uh, weak. We really need to go darker in order to, to make the, the light uh, reveal itself. So really it seems that uh, um, at this point uh, that uh, I do paint this uh, head uh, in black and white again it's something that uh, I do for uh, the first time and um, I didn't really know how to exactly um, proceed but uh, I, I, let, I just let my instinct uh, guide me so here you will see a little bit uh, how I proceed with painting the, the clothes of uh, this painting. Um, I will have a full uh, version of uh, how, the, how I painted clothes on uh, my Patreon um, page. Along uh, with uh, that video on how I painted the clothes, I will have um, a slower version of uh, this uh, painting. Uh, just for you to see um, how much time it took and uh, 
um, the brush strokes in uh, slow motion of course there are here in this video you will see the um, the significant uh, moments in building the face uh, in uh, uh, a slower motion and uh, i will comment it as best uh, as i can um, the clothes uh, and how I built them, how I painted them will be on my Patreon page. Uh, there is a link on the description below. I want to thank um, at this point here my patrons for, um, for supporting me there. And uh, I want to thank you so much my patrons for... Uh, um, really supporting me it's something that uh, allows me to proceed with uh, creating these videos thank you so much and uh, um, I do hope that uh, you find my content there interesting as well so now I get <laughs> to the fun uh, part of uh, this painting. I have uh, painted uh, a black and white version of, of this painting, uh, um, you know, uh, well enough, I would say, but not in a very best detail. So now I will proceed with uh, um, something uh, that was uh, very strange for me when I first saw it. So I let the painting dry for a couple of days. I was uh, I'm sure here that uh, the the layer underneath uh, is dry, and uh, I created a color that uh, consists uh, from uh, titanium white, some uh, uh, yellow ochre, and a little bit of uh, cadmium red. And with this uh, flesh-like uh, color, I proceed with uh, covering the the lighted uh, parts of uh, this painting. First I started uh, from uh, the torso of uh, Judith and uh, co just just covering the white part with this uh, uh, semi-transparent uh, oil uh, layer of um, yellowish uh, fleshy color. Make sure that uh, the layer underneath is uh, dry completely. Let uh, the painting for a couple of days uh, to to dry. And uh, I know this seems <laughs> very strange, but uh, yeah, it seems that uh, Caravaggio actually used this technique to to paint his paintings. So little by little I will cover uh, this uh, lighted uh, parts with color. I don't actually uh, worry about uh, covering uh, um, some uh, other elements. Because uh, to me <laughs> this, uh, this painting uh, is something of an experiment uh, as well. I really want to see, I wanted to see if this would uh, lead me anywhere apart from <laughs> disaster. <laughs> so anyway, I try to keep uh, this layer uh, very thin um, and uh, here for the first time I introduce my pigments a little bit of uh, extra linseed oil on my palette. As I said before, I just used uh, turpentine to, to thin my colors on my palette. Now as I proceed with uh, the layers of uh, this painting, I will add uh, a few, a little percentage of uh, of linseed oil on my palette. We have to go, as we paint oil, we have to go from uh, leaner to fatter uh, consistency in our colors. That means that uh, here I have added uh, on this yellow just one or two drops uh, on a little puddle of color on my palette. Just one or few or, few or two drops of linseed oil. So the same thing uh, that I did for the light, 
now I do for uh, the shadows so I want to color the shadow here I want to have a shadow that will not be just uh, uh, gray uh, dark gray I want uh, this shadow to be col colored so uh, I will create a color that uh, believe uh, um, is uh, the right one it's uh, like a dark uh, ochre um, maybe a little uh, in the verge of uh, being uh, greenish and um, with this uh, color I will uh, cover the, the shadowy parts on, of this uh, head even now that uh, I'm commenting on this uh, video I really <laughs> it really seems strange to me that uh, Caravaggio did work like this So now it's also a chance for me to uh, maybe do some corrections in the values of, um, of my colors. <coughs> and uh, little by little I will uh, place these colors on my shadows, do some uh, uh, primordial uh, blending, a little bit of blending. Um, if you do try um, this technique, um, do, do not freak out <laughs> by uh, the various uh, stages of this painting. Don't, don't freak out uh, about how uh, this might look uh, before you have reached uh, into a satisfying uh, um, stage. Um, it really does uh, look uh, bad. It really does feel that uh, um, this will never become something uh, um, nice. Uh, I would say just keep painting uh, and that's what I say to myself I will give it some time some uh, sessions of uh, painting and uh, see if it uh, leads me somewhere uh, without having the, the security without having the, the reassurance that uh, this will become actually something uh, nice um, I just have faith that uh, I will bring the, the painting into a satisfying uh, uh, point. Until then, I try to not uh, to keep my composure and uh, uh, to keep painting. And of course, I say that, uh, all right, even if uh, this will be a complete failure, that's fine. Uh, painting uh, is about uh, failing and uh, it uh, teaches us to you know to expect failure and uh, to fight for uh, uh, not failing um, painting is uh, many people say to me how nice it is uh, to be in the studio and uh, i agree it's really nice it's uh, therapeutic in uh, many cases. I for sure know that I would be in deep trouble if uh, uh, I didn't paint. Um, I know this for sure. Uh, but uh, at the same time, painting is not uh, <laughs> is not uh, always very satisfying. It's a struggle. It's something that. Um, um, homes our brains is something that uh, uh, keeps us uh, in uh, extreme alert uh, when we paint when i do paint i rarely uh, think of anything else and uh, of course that is the therapeutic part of it i it just absorbs absorbs me completely um, the the process is very um, absorbing and 100% uh, of my mind is on uh, the the painting process i rarely think of uh, anything else 
and um, that can be nice and uh, exhausting uh, as well of course exhausting in uh, a nice uh, way since uh, um, we actually get to escape from uh, um, other uh, problems, issues that we might uh, face uh, in reality. Um, I, I am curious, please uh, let me know uh, if painting does work uh, this for you, if um, you feel uh, um, therape this therapeutic uh, element of painting uh, when you paint and uh, if this would, if this helps you, <laughs> uh, in the same way like it helps uh, me, I do have to, to tell you that uh, although uh, my voice looks uh, calm and uh, I look, uh, I seem to be very composed. Uh, I have to tell you that uh, reality and uh, the events uh, globally and locally do affect me a lot. And uh, I'm so grateful for being able to get into the studio and uh, escape from uh, all that. So here, uh, just by using uh, my shadow uh, colors and uh, my um, flesh uh, light colors, uh, for the face, I try to do a very basic, very uh, little blending on uh, the face um, before proceeding uh, here to covering the the area of the hair with uh, a more hairy like color. I will just uh, keep things uh, very uh, non-detailed at this point. I will just paint with uh, this uh, ochre-like uh, color for the lighted areas of uh, the hair and uh, with uh, a darker uh, um, warm color, brown color, I will cover the, um, the darker areas of uh, uh, the hairy part of the head. With this uh, same uh, uh, dark brown color, I will see if I can uh, darken uh, the, the, the flesh that is in the shadow, as you see here. And uh, again, some more uh, blending. I believe uh, Caravaggio must have been much more uh, quick and um, you know co comfortable with uh, doing this. He might have used uh, a bigger brush uh, to paint, but um, this really for me, um, not following exactly what he did is fine with me. As I say, I was not there, and I want to paint in a way that uh, makes sense uh, to me personally. And um, I always try to, to understand what I am about to do and to feel that um, although I, I move in, in darkness somehow because uh, this is how I feel, at the same time um, I can see my uh, next uh, one or two steps. Uh, I don't just um, paint uh, randomly. Uh, I try to understand what I'm doing uh, in a way that makes sense for me and uh, the painting. 
I don't really know if this makes sense uh, to you and uh, that's why I don't really give you um, at this point my palette, I don't show you my palette, I don't really think um, this would be a great teaching uh, method for me tutoring method for me to just uh, ask you to follow blindly what I'm doing I'm just giving you uh, the um, what's going on in my mind when I'm painting and uh, let's just try to compare notes and uh, see if this makes sense um, to you as well in a way that makes sense to me Actually, I like this uh, comparing notes uh, idea. This, uh, I would say that uh, this channel is uh, um, exactly this. Uh, more than uh, teaching you how I paint or methods uh, to paint, is more like comparing ideas and trying to see if uh, when you paint, uh, you think uh, like me or... Um, just to you know encourage uh, each other about the uh, about how hard sometimes painting can be and um, take uh, courage and faith to proceed so so yes it wouldn't be correct for me to to ask you to follow this uh, tutorial uh, step by step or exactly do exactly um, pause the video and do exactly what i'm doing just try to understand the basic uh, um, maybe idea behind all this and uh, try it uh, yourselves So, as I said, this is the first time that I'm using this uh, technique and uh, I would say that relatively I'm, I'm new to uh, oil uh, painting. I used to, to paint in oils when I was a student uh, of uh, fine arts back in uh, 1999. Uh, then I dropped this medium to using uh, acrylics and uh, tempera. So... Um, it's uh, almost uh, a, a year or two that I'm using this uh, uh, medium again and uh, I always feel uh, um, that there is something more to learn, something more to explore and the more, of you, the more I paint with it, uh, the more I believe that uh, I would become better. So I just uh, have uh, Caravaggio as my teacher here. I try to guess uh, what he did uh, on the hair, what he did on the face, how he achieved uh, this uh, wonderful uh, uh, contrast between uh, shadow and uh, light. And uh, this brings me to something uh, I was planning uh, long now to, to discuss in these tutorials that uh, it's something that a teacher of mine told me many many years ago um, that the whole uh, battle in painting is between in the, in the areas between light and shadow um, where light meets the shadow is uh, the most interest and uh, where the you know um, where I should uh, give all my attention. So he was really right and uh, and um, as I said before, uh, shadows are important, but also uh, the passage from shadow to light, that uh, areas where uh, there is this um, uh, transition between the lights and the shadows are very very important and the way we achieve this transition is uh, truly um, what makes us uh, a good paint painter uh, or not so here I see that uh, I need to, to darken a little bit uh, some areas to expand their shape as here uh, under the nose and um, under the, on the lower part of uh, the chin and also create some stronger uh, uh, contrast between uh, the 
the lights and um, the shadows by by darkening the shadow a little bit. I don't want to darken the shadow um, very much because there has to be some uh, um, adventure, let's say, of light in the shadow as well. And uh, you see how where the shadow exactly meets the light, uh, the shadow becomes stronger as uh, in the cheeks or under the chin. Um, this is something that uh, we always have to to observe and remember that uh, um, shadows become a little bit stronger just before uh, meeting the light. And um, here on this uh, part of the video, I sped up the um, I sped up the video just uh, because it's uh, a process of um, blending, moving color around, and trying to um, to achieve uh, this um, the right. Um, um, the right darks and the right uh, uh, lights. I still am um, using uh, not my brightest uh, lights. I'm still am using uh, for the flesh for the light part uh, uh, the first uh, color that uh, I used to cover the the white part of my uh, face. And um, if I had to. Uh, to condense what I'm doing uh, so far is just uh, I'm I've played uh, well from the beginning is that uh, I drew my I painted my shadows my darker facial characteristics then uh, I placed uh, a white uh, light a tit titanium white light uh, on the areas where the light will be then I I did some blending uh, of that white and I created a grayish painting of uh, my study. Then I covered the light uh, parts with a fleshy color and the darker uh, parts with uh, a colored uh, shadow. And uh, after that, here at this point, I'm doing some uh, blending uh, in between the shadows and the light. I try to see if something is uh, warmer uh, in tone uh, than uh, uh, not. And uh, overall, do some uh, blending. I observe here on the nostrils that uh, they darken and become more uh, brownish, more uh, red. I will try to, to do that. Um, I will try to keep uh, um, the contrast, uh, I will half uh, close my eyes and uh, I will observe if the contrast between this first light and uh, the shadows uh, is, looks correct. Uh, I of course anticipate that um, a stronger light will follow. And uh, little by little, uh, I think uh, this uh, take uh, some form, and uh, I freak, uh, <laughs> I freak out less and less the more I paint. The amazing uh, thing about uh, this painting is not only the mastery, of course, of Caravaggio, but also if you observe the original, is the how strong uh, the uh, the character of uh, this girl uh, looks. Uh, it's uh, the, the the psychology of her is correct. Caravaggio has captured this moment of uh, agony. Um, of killing uh, the a strong man. Uh, that this woman has, and uh, although she is contained, um, it certainly we can feel the agony and uh, uh, how agitated uh, she is uh, inside. Uh, he was uh, truly a master um, painter. He wondered uh, what the feelings of this girl uh, must have been 
then and he made the correct uh, I would say guess and of course depicted these uh, feelings on her uh, face so now I'm ready to proceed with uh, a second uh, light that is a little bit uh, stronger than the first just to to reveal uh, more the volume and uh, the light adventures on her uh, on, on her head um, as you see, I will apply a light that is um, again titanium white, a little bit of uh, cadmium uh, red or alizarin red, just a little bit to be to make it just slightly more pinkish than yellowish of the first uh, layer, but also uh, lighter in value. It's uh, much closer to white uh, than before, and uh, as I'm applying this layer of uh, color. I will also add uh, a few more drops of uh, uh, linseed oil uh, on my palette and uh, at the same time I will try to blend, uh, to not cover uh, my previous layer of painting but um, to blend it in a way that uh, does uh, make sense. And as you see, as I place this, uh, these lights on the face, uh, everything uh, starts looking more, more, much more uh, nice. Uh, it uh, really does uh, make sense. And um, what now I have to do is just uh, really blend this second uh, light to the first in a way that is... Uh, uh, of course relevant to my reference and uh, also uh, makes uh, sense. I don't want this color to float um, on the previous layer um, but uh, I want this color to to, um, to be incorpor uh, incorporated to the previous layer in a way that looks uh, natural and um, to make sense. So here uh, I add the uh, in-between uh, tone that is also more transparent. Uh, I will add some of my first light and um, some of the second light and I will make it much uh, thin by adding turpentine and uh, linseed oil. I will make a, a glaze almost something very thin and with this will be the way of uh, blending this color to each other. If I feel that uh, I cover everything uh, I can uh, move uh, a little bit backwards like uh, take um, color of from the first uh, the, the first light my darker uh, light let's say and uh, apply this uh, on top. This, all, this again is a process that uh, uh, takes time and um, has its uh, backs and forth. Sometimes uh, when we blend we lose the, the power of this uh, stronger uh, light. And um, I see that Caravaggio is not uh, shy in having these uh, strong uh, lights on his uh, painting. At the same time these are not uh, strong enough to to make them lose uh, the volume of the head the how round the head uh, is and the adventures of uh, the wrinkles uh, on it so i have to be careful to to lighten this uh, this face to create this contrast between uh, overall between the light and the shadow but at the same time uh, keep in mind that uh, not everything should be washed uh, white but uh, to keep the the volume and uh, the um, how can i say the variety of tones on this uh, face Now, when I'm painting uh, this, I also have uh, a piece of cloth uh, on my lap and uh, sometimes, like now, when I have to blend, I will wipe my, uh, my brush on that uh, piece of cloth and uh, this makes blending much uh, easier. 
um, don't forget to, to, to use a piece of cloth. You will understand uh, how useful it is to, to wipe. Sometimes I wipe uh, my brush on that cloth and uh, I just uh, dip it in uh, plain turpentine uh, with uh, a little bit of linseed oil and then I will do some uh, uh, blending with uh, that uh, brush that is very light it has only linseed oil and uh, um, turpentine and this will create a very nice very smooth blending um, here I'll try to now the color is still wet underneath it uh, is harder for me to apply color without uh, this becoming uh, muddier uh, so i will try to to achieve some um, lightness on the forehead uh, without uh, this becoming uh, muddy I hope you find this uh, <laughs> demonstration uh, helpful and interesting. I hope that uh, you are not uh, asleep. Um, some people tell me that uh, they like to play this, uh, these videos before they sleep. And uh, I guess uh, this is nice to help people uh, relax and uh, <laughs> sleep. Uh, I do hope though that um, you find this uh, tutorial helpful and uh, inspiring um, for your own uh, artwork. At least uh, at this point of uh, the, the painting process, uh, it seems uh, that um, the painting will not be a complete uh, disaster and uh, this is nice because um, we can uh, you know relax uh, a little bit and um, reassure that ourselves that uh, okay our time was not a complete uh, waste um, although even if it was a failure our time i believe is not a waste we always learn something and uh, we it's always nice to spend time on the easel even if um, we will not achieve it but uh, anyway at least now i'm painting in a more relaxed way um, not completely relaxed though, I have to say, not completely relaxed, but uh, at least it seems that uh, something nice will come out of this uh, study. Um, sometimes you see me painting back and forth, covering something uh, that uh, um, that uh, seems strange uh, you ask me uh, why i did this or i did that i can't actually explain many things uh, it's uh, up to that uh, moment when i paint i have the uh, as you as i told you before i just see my next uh, two or three steps i can't see more than that as it's really like as if i'm walking uh, in the fog so I can't really explain why I'm doing this or I'm doing that. I ju I'm just uh, completely abandoned to my instinct and um, and that's that. That's that. Again, this uh, zone from light to, from light to darkness is uh, very. Um, demanding, uh, it requires uh, some uh, attention, it requires us to be much in alert and uh, try to make your best to do these transitions uh, <clears throat> as smoothly or as uh, abrupt as uh, you think they should be. And uh, I would say, you know, another big issue is to know when to stop painting something. I would, uh, my advice there is to always um, 
pursue for something uh, better, even with the risk of uh, destroying everything. I th- I believe it's um, always nice to to push things a little bit uh, more. Uh, we learn something uh, on that moment when we don't feel comfortable or when we feel that there is something more for um, the the painting to give us. Um, so I would advise to. <clears throat> To keep painting until uh, you are sure that uh, okay now it's time for me to stop if uh, the painting does not reassure you about that <clears throat> i would say just uh, keep painting until you feel uh, satisfied and uh, that you have given everything you could on uh, a painting so now little by little this uh, does look uh, Um, fleshy enough Uh, it does look that there is some uh, volume on this uh, head Um, the lights the lighted part uh, does not look uh, complete uh, flat there is some although it is in the light there is some uh, adventures there and uh, i think that is uh, interesting and uh, something i do like Of course, there are areas more demanding and more uh, uh, difficult, but uh, yeah, little by little we will uh, manage. Here I, I show you how I painted the the mouth, and um, you have to know that uh, before painting a mouth, uh, the head uh, might look lifeless. Mouths. Uh, um, because they are so warm they do give uh, a sense of life on the on the painting so here i just try to follow the reference of caravaggio i see that the upper lip is much uh, darker than the lower lip i try to understand uh, what exactly the color of uh, the low, lower lip uh, is um, and uh, try there to to build the the light try to understand how the light falls on the mouth on the lips but uh, directly you see that uh, the portrait becomes more vivid and um, uh, more uh, alive here are some uh, <laughs> uh, video recording uh, issues anyway Um, proceeding with uh, the hair now I will uh, try to um, again to see how dark the darker areas of uh, the face uh, of the hair is and uh, and try to prepare uh, the hair for the highlights that are very important uh, of course here Uh, try to to see the transitions between the the forehead and uh, what's happening there in the middle of the head uh, with this uh, zone of flesh in between the hair um, i would say that uh, it's mostly uh, back and forth uh, between uh, you know lights and shadows on the hair until it's time for the highlights where we just proceed with uh, the the light as you see i darken sometimes i move backwards um, i add uh, uh, light i add uh, shadows i blend these two and uh, at some t- point i will add just uh, the highlights of uh, on this uh, head So this video is uh, almost uh, over. I do hope you enjoyed it and you uh, understood um, how I paint this uh, reference. Maybe we learn something uh, about the technique of um, this great uh, maestro uh, Caravaggio. 
and um, um, I will be very happy, very glad to uh, to be informed that uh, uh, you did try this uh, technique of Caravaggio, that you were in inspired to get into the studio and paint something uh, like this, or that you applied this uh, uh, this technique for uh, your um, personal uh, uh, contemporary work. Um, this is the meaning of uh, these um, studies, of course. That's uh, what I think. It's just to uh, make us better uh, painters. When we study something, um, uh, we learn something and later on we can apply it on our uh, personal uh, creative uh, artwork. Uh, these are not for, uh, uh, you know, the value of these studies is uh, limited, I would say, but uh, their uh, learning value is really, really great. So thank you so much for being here and for supporting me and uh, this channel. Um, let me know in the comments uh, <laughs> about... Um, uh, your uh, artwork, uh, what you paint this period, uh, what uh, you dream to paint and uh, what painting of course uh, does for you if uh, it is so helpful as it is for me. Um, again, thank you so much. If you liked uh, this video, please uh, press the like button and uh, subscribe to this channel. And uh, of course, again, I want to thank my patrons for uh, financially supporting me and helping uh, these videos to be created. So, this portrait is uh, almost uh, done. And uh, I want to thank you again. Uh, have a very, very nice rest of uh, the summer. I will see you soon with uh, another video tutorial. Uh, until then, stay healthy, stay creative and uh, be happy and grateful for being artists. Thank you so much. I will see you soon. Bye.